Hello students, welcome to a new session of our mathematical world, data handling. Today, we are going to discuss the bar graph. Here, we can see that a shopkeeper is selling milk packets from his shop. Every Saturday, he calculates the number of milk packets sold from Monday to Friday. Last Saturday, he calculated the number of milk packets sold and marked it on a chart. In the previous class, we learned about pictographs. Can we make a pictograph based on the given data? While drawing the pictograph, based on the given situation, we must face some difficulties like what should be the value of the symbol? If the value of the symbol is a small number like 2, it is easy to mark 2 and 7, but difficult to mark 30. If we take the value as a larger number like 10, then we can easily represent 30 but difficult to represent 2 and 7. To overcome many such difficulties, we use a bar graph. A bar graph is another form of graphical representation of data, showing the quantity of data according to the length of bars. The bar graph for the given situation will be shown as follows. In this bar graph, Days are taken along the x-axis and the number of milk packets along the y-axis. Here the role is 1 unit equals 5 milk packets. This means that 1 unit of length is for 5 packets of milk. To show the number of objects, draw bars of uniform width with equal spacing between them. On Monday, the number of milk packets sold is 7, we should mark a bar corresponding to both Monday and the value on the vertical axis and join it with the day. Similarly, we can mark each data according to the days. Also, we can draw this graph horizontally. That is, the number of milk packets along the x-axis and the days along the y-axis. Let's do another example. In a factory, the number of cycles produced during five consecutive weeks are given below. Draw a bar graph using these data. First, draw the x-axis and y-axis. Then, mark various weeks on the x-axis and the number of cycles on the y-axis. Choose the convenient scale to represent numerical data correctly. Here, we can take the scale as one unit equals 200 cycles, as most of the numbers are multiples of 200. Next, draw bars of equal width for all the weeks of equal distance. Also, we can draw this graph horizontally. Now observe the given graph. Can you answer the following questions? In which week was the maximum number of cycles produced? The answer is third week. Next, in which week was the minimum number of cycles produced? From the graph, it's clear that the minimum number of cycles was produced in the fifth week. 
In this way, the bar graph helps us to give the information by looking at and comparing data. Before winding up, let's check how much you understood by doing an activity. Draw an appropriate graph to represent the given information. That's all for now. See you all in the next class with another interesting topic.